podcast itself was taken and made for a mask for one of Bowie's concerts in the 70s. Some fine detail work, mouth cavity. David, my old friend. Mr. Bowie. Let's get ready to rumble. There we go. Everything's set up. We have the bust of the man himself. We've got the woodpecker electromagnetic pneumatic hammer strung up, ready to be fired away. An ideal piece of kit for marble carving. We've got our machinetta pointing machine set up. We've got our three points of contact on the model guided by a small amount of Akimi resin to help the prongs find their rest nice and simply. We then have <coughs> the corresponding three nests where the crochet or crosswood that the machinetta is attached to sits on the stone side of the operation. And then we have the piece of kit itself, beautiful piece of Carrara marble. And here we have the plaster cast of David Bowie. Apparently, the cast itself was taken and made for a mask for one of Bowie's concerts in the 70s. The mask was then thrown into the crowd at some point in the, in the concert. And that mask was then turned into a plaster cast which has done the rounds over the last 50 years and from cast to cast who knows what generation of cast I have here this is probably the cast of a cast of a cast of a cast several great grandfathers of casts later I have something to work from First and foremost, the slow part is picking up a few initial points. As you see in the time lapse, I've used the cutter to take a couple of chunks off. I've also started working with the woodpecker, the alternative to the traditional compressed air pneumatic chisels. And I'm just picking up a few of the initial points of reference. Tip of the nose, tip of the chin and a couple of the direct lines from the nose following the angle of the forehead. A couple of important things, once these points are in place then we can start working out the matrix between them which will give us a much better understanding of the map of the face. So to do this I'm using drills just to get to depth and marking the points in. working to within about two mil of the final surface, allowing for the final surface to be worked, obviously by hand. This obviously allows for any potential bruising that happens to the stone. And of course, any subtle, excuse me, subtle variations in the, in the surface. This point I'm working on now is one of the points on his brow. The man himself's furrowed brow. And we're just at the moment, if you can see, probably about five mil off. So I'm gonna go a little bit deeper. Here we are starting to gain some points. Now when I talk about being a couple of mil off or needing to go a couple of mil deeper, the pointing machine here itself, which is made up of two arms and a crochet. The important arm is the pin. It touches here down both to the point on the model and the corresponding point on the stone that I'm trying to reach. When I'm a couple of mil off, I can see that by looking here at just how much more that pin has to drop until 
it touches the, the point on the stone that I'm trying to achieve. And we can see here that we are a couple of mil away from that actually touching. When I transfer that over and put the crochet and the pointer machine back onto the model itself, and we look at where it's touching on the, exactly the same point on the forehead of Mr. Bowie, and we look back up at that depth gauge, we can see that the pin has dropped to a point where it's touching its corresponding metal plate. Therefore, it's reached perfect and exact depth on the model. And that's what I'm trying to achieve on the stone itself and transferring that point across. So here we are. We've got so far eight points on Mr. Bowie's face. We've picked up two points on his chin, one point on the tip of his nose, one just as it rolls over and four points on his brow. I've managed to pick all eight of those points up on the stone as well as having the angle of the face now. So we've already picked up that profile going through. Eight down, I'd say probably about 100 to 120 more to go. Here we go again, and we've got a point of reference here so we know where we're going in. We've got about five mil to go down on this point. I'm just going to be using today instead of the hand drill that I was using previously for the first few points where we had to go quite deep into the stone. I'm actually today going to be using some rotary burrs with a great bit of kit which is the Ford and Pendant motor, Dremel equivalent and we're using a nice firm coarse burr, spherical burr on there. It's a, it's a wonderful bit of kit, it's got a foot control for speed and what we get here is we get a nice alternative to the, to the drill bit, fantastic. That's wonderful, that's going to work for us, just getting down to depth for the next few points. Safety first, second and last. We're using a flush cut diamond blade for the cutting. Ears and lungs. Let's get it on. So I've chopped away a little bit of the unwanted bulk and we're left with a little bit more of the shape. Now it's just point, transfer and repeat. So we've got a profile coming through. We've got chin, lips, nose, bridge, brow. And then of course we've got those corresponding points here. Slow process, we'll get there. So what we're doing, just starting off, joining up some of the dots. Just very much loose. We're getting some of the planes together. Still leaving a good three to four mil above any of the points. Refer into the points of reference on the on the original. We're just again getting rid of some of the weight. Picked up some nice points here on the face today. We're starting to join a few up, getting the orbits of the eye. Got a quite an interesting natural inclusion in the stone there. It should be interesting to see how that pans out as we carry on working the work in the face. That runs right the way across the top of the nose there. Could be quite an interesting feature, almost scar-like. We'll see if Mr. Bowie wears it well. A long way to go, but you know. One point at a time, one chip at a time. Dust is a must, so in dust we trust. So we're joining up some of the dots, giving us a bit of a lower idea of some of the extremities of the jawline and the lips.
Getting the chisels out. Fun times. Constantly referring back to the model itself, just looking at the journey between the points and how that can be replicated in the stone. Working closer, slowly, slowly. Catchy monkey. And just on the nose here, just getting to a point where I'm getting the rasps out. A combination of five shaft rasps, which I'm using at the moment, and diamond, diamond rasps. The difference between the two is about 300 quid. So, uh, of course, uh, of course will work early doors. I'm doing with the five sharp ones. We'll get onto the diamond ones a little bit later. I've got about 16 different shapes and heads with different angles, different cavities. Here we are, we're starting to get a sense of the nose and the lips, sense of the nostrils and the cheekbones there. I think next we'll start working on the eminences of the lips and the eyes. I think we can see a little bit of Bowie there already coming through. Just to give you a rundown on the tools from today, we've been using a combination of bull noses and claws of varying sizes, ranging from a two tooth through to a four tooth and bull noses. We've also started on some rasps. The rasps I've been using today have been a mix of diamond files, which you can see here, and the carbide steel rasps, which you can see here. Onto the lips and eyes next. As we get closer in, we're starting to get points that are only about a mil or so away from the from the final surface. We're starting to get some of the form of the face, and in some ways, we're starting to see the man himself popping out from from in the stone. But it's still a very slow process, just working our way between the points. I've taken probably somewhere in the region of 30 or 40 points today and they're all points that are taking us closer and closer to the final surface. Still will be at least another round of points and removals on this side of the face. But I think you can see now the difference between phase one, which we were on the right hand side of the face, and phase two, where we're getting to on the left. That is Mr. Bowie's left, not ours. So, magic happened, the dots got joined, and we have the first half of the face taken down to final level. Now we're just about to start on the left. We've already got that eye in place, matching with the model. And it's now point to find, join and repeat. I'm using a color coordination now. Now that I'm down to the last two mil on the surface, so I use red on the right hand side of the face and I'm using blue because it's pretty and it stops confusion. So I'm looking there about three mil off. Getting the rotary tool in, just taking it down to that level. Just checking the point there. Okay. And then on the claws, we join them up and start to make the surfaces work. Concentrating on the journey between the points. So we've gone through the filing stages, we're now down to rubbing and we go through different grades of rubbing pad starting with a 60 to 80 green then moving on to our 120 which is the red and then we move on to the 200 plus which is the yellow. So it's just quite a lengthy laborious process just going over working 
already been over with the green and the red on this area. A little bit of water in there as well. Keeps the slurry from building up in there. And we just keep on going. Let's have a look at that. All right. Time now to hang up the pointing machine. Put him away for this job. There we go. And release the beast. Uh, we're just going to take off the frame that we had on that. What we got? First pass. There we go. Just doing some fine detail work. Mouth cavity. Final shaping of the lips there. Here we go, just getting an idea of where the lightning shall strike. It's free handed at the moment. I'm using a reference picture, I'm not just guessing. Using now a rubbing net. It's a, it's a kind of rubbing tool, it's not a paper, it's a net. You can see it's trans transparent. The name of it is Abronet and he got the grades currently on a 320 just working some of the imperfections you can see I've come inside now a bit of different lighting so we work our way up through the Abronets and as we get higher and higher we get a higher polish and at this point it's more about polishing rather than shaping and what I can do is I can call in my helpful assistant <laughs> who comes in and does a lot of the hard work there. Fantastic, you're doing a great job. That's it, and it's this. This is now, we've taken it up to around about 1,000 grit. I've worked my way up through the Abronets from 80 to 120 to 360 to 400 to 600, and now finally on 1,000. Let's just see the great work that Bobby's doing. Fantastic, you really are. A sculptor in the making. Oh, here we are, and we've also got our other little assistant, Flocky, in the house. Are you going to give us a hand, Flocky? I'm doing it now. That's it on the other one. Superb. Just working on a polish before we go on to do the gilding <laughs> phase for the final iconic trademark Bowie esque thing that will pop it out. So we're starting to see the man himself which is fantastic. How are you getting on there, camera girl? Good. Wonderful, doing a really good job. Vlog, good vlog job. There we go. Mwah. Okay, with the polishing process, it's really slow. It makes it look quite quick when you see it on the video like this. But the point is, is that you work on every area through the grades. And the most important thing is, is that you don't take the detail away. Polishing you very carefully, you fold the pieces, you find the right bits to get in all the nooks and crannies without taking away the detail that we've worked so hard over the last six, seven days to achieve. I'm gonna be using a product by the name of Renaissance Wax. This is a micro crystalline wax polish used by museums, galleries, around the world, produced in London, UK. Restorators, conservators, wax of choice. Helps fill up some of those very fine scratch marks left by the thousand, thousand grit paper. Oh, look at that colour come out. And this really is where the magic happens. Of gilding. Masked off the face, just for that first two sharp lines. It's been um, a fun process carving. I've decided I'm going to add Bowie's, uh, or should I say Aladdin's trademark lightning bolt. Um, I'm going to gild it, so I'm going to be using foils, coloured foils. It's very similar to gold leaf, but in multiple colours. Got the red, pink, blue, and a slight bit of black in there for the for the for the trademark iconic dash. Very straightforward process. Gilding adhesive. It's a, a water-based resin. Then coming back and uh, doing a bit of gilding. Here's the first foil that's going on. I've toyed with the idea of using different colours, but I'm going to go with the with the classic. Starting to get 
to get there. First pass worked quite nicely. Now for the blue. See how it comes out. Now all that's left is the mountain. Final stage, mountain. Using a two pass epoxy resin, pinning it in the base and in David's neck. Dollop up inside his head, using a threaded bar, 